Afro Tales Podcast is a part of the Connected Podcast Network. Ahoy, my friends. Welcome aboard the Afro Tales Podcast. I'm your storyteller, Aman Mazinga. Join me as we explore the tales that grew from the people of indigenous and African descent in the Americas and the Caribbean. After, come and see me, chef, who will impart upon you a recipe for the story you have just heard. So with no further ado, let us set sail on this new age of exploration. From the Koji Why Tobacco Grows Close to Houses In former times, tobacco plants were people. They loved stories. And for this reason, they always lived close to the walls of houses. That way, they could lean forward and listen whenever stories were about to be told. Even if they just heard talking, they would get as close to the walls as possible and listen. Therefore, the mother arranged her creation so that tobacco plants would never grow anywhere except around houses. Up close to the walls. There they can listen easily. In addition, the mother commanded that tobacco be chewed with coca leaves. Because that way, tobacco can hear the stories directly from the mouths of the storytellers. She was thought and memory. The sea existed first. Everything was dark. There was no sun, no moon. There were no people, no animals, no plants, only the sea, everywhere. The sea was the mother. She was water, water everywhere. She was the river, lake, stream, and sea, existing in all places. And so, in the beginning, there was only the mother. She was called Haba Galkova. The mother was not a person, not anything, nothing at all. She was a luna, soul, life, or desire. She was the spirit of what would come. And she was thought and memory. The mother existed only as a luna. In the lowest world. The lowest depths. Alone. When the mother existed in this manner, the earths, the worlds, were formed above her. Up to where our world exists today. The end. The Palm Tree Story. A pregnant woman went to fetch water. She filled her jaw, but when she tried to put it on her head, she strained herself and couldn't lift it. All at once, she was giving birth. Just as three men passed by, out seeking their fortune. And now, Suddenly, she had a little boy. The child said, Mama, I'll lift the jar for you. There. Now give me your blessings to follow those men. And off he went. Running after three travelers, he called out, Good friends, wait up. One of them said to the others, Hey, now look at this. There's a little boy following us. They caught him and tied him to an anthill. He freed himself and ran on. Friends, wait for me. They caught him again and tried to stone him. They dropped him into a deep pool. Again he got free and kept on their trail. Wait up! The three of them said to each other, Let's fix him for good. 
But when they tried to catch him, he scurried up a tree. He called down to them. Hey, in the distance, I see a little house. This smoke rising. People are living there. And this time, it was the men who followed the boy. They walked on with the boy in the lead until they reached the house. An old woman came out and said, What? Wind tossed you here. The wind that blows, answered the boy. The old woman had some flesh sizzling in a pan. She gave it to them for their supper. Then saying, Nidroson, she put each of the men to bed with one of her three daughters. Since the boy refused to stay indoors, she sent him out to spend the night with the nanny goats. As soon as as she thought everybody was asleep. She got up and sharpened her knife with her tongue fluttering. Ra, 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 little knife, do your work, ra. But when she went after the boy, she heard him announcing in a loud voice, these goats won't let me sleep. She went back indoors. While she lay in bed, waiting for the ghost to stop bleeding. The boy took logs from the wood pile and made three life-size dolls. Hearing nothing, finally, the old woman got up again with her tongue fluttering. Ra, ra, ra. Little knife, do your work. Ra. But when she went for the boy, he had moved to the hen house. These chickens, he was saying, they won't let me sleep. The old woman went back to bed. Just before dawn, at last, she was snoring. The boy brought the three dolls in the house and dressed them in the daughter's clothes. He whispered to the man, get up. He put the man's jackets on the three sleeping daughters. And the three men and the boy slipped out of the house. They were long gone when the old woman woke up again. She sharpened her knife and finished off the three sleepers in men's jackets. Then realized she had butchered her own daughters. She put her strong box under one arm, mounted a lean pig she kept for riding, and gave a cry. Piggy, get on, run with the dawn. She had almost caught up with the boy when he saw her coming and ran up a palm tree. She opened her strong box, pulled out a hatchet, and hurled it at the tree. Slim down! And the trunk of the tree became thinner. The boy filled his pockets with hen eggs. He threw an egg. Fatten up! And the tree became thick. She threw the hatchet again. Slim down. He threw another egg. Fatten up. Slim down. Fatten up. Slim down. Grandmother, throw it here. She threw the hatchet again. He caught it and returned it, slicing off one of her arms. She flung it back with the good arm. He caught it and flung it again. And this time, it did her in. He climbed down the tree, and with the hatchet, he took out her heart and sliced it into three little tidbits. He tucked the tidbits into the strong box and ran back to the house. The three men had gotten there ahead of him, and they were tearing up the place, looking for the old woman's jewels. The boy removed the tidbits from the strong box and smeared the blood on the three daughters they immediately came back to life. Then he presented the young women to the three companions who had treated him so cruelly and left them happily married with all the jewels in the old woman's strong ones. Farewell, he said, and he was gone. They didn't see him again until they went to heaven. He was an angel. The end.
Wow. So, great stories from Jean Beerhurst in the Latin American Folk Tales book. Now, I'm going to be transparent with you. I already recorded this. I had to do it again because of editing. And I realized that these are three why stories. I didn't, it, it didn't even dawn on me at first when I was first reading them that they were three white stories. I was so focused on the parallels between the palm tree story and black and white from last season that I didn't even look at the fact that this is the story on why palm trees are the size they are, why tobacco grows near houses, and why the earth is what it is and the universe is what it is. Three why stories coming from the Colombian people. Um, the two on the back end coming from uh, the Koji people. I mean, on the not on the back, but on the front end, coming from the Koji people of Colombia in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Th- these are just awesome stories. And if you see that it does parallel well with the um folk tale from brazil from black to white then you see a lot of those characteristics characteristics going on in the story where the young boys helping the three men um the three daughters the witchy woman um i hate to say witchy but that's the only thing that i can um say to convey it um because that's how they portrayed her. Some kind of witchy woman that cast spells and everything like that. I love how he cuts her arm off and just cuts her up. That's that's just awesome. The whole um, thicker, thinner thing. Uh, bigger, smaller. You know, these are in folk tales. It's the magic. You know, the number three. Um, the magic eggs. <laughs> the magic hatchet is all in there. And it is quite literally wonderful. Um, yeah. Once I realized that this was a why story, it like literally changed how I viewed this whole um, episode. Because why tobacco grows near homes to hear the stories that we tell. Being a storyteller that is just awesome because I have tobacco in my house. <laughs> and it's just like, you guys over there listening to me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> also, um, Aluna, the Koji people have a wonderful history and they have been secluded for many years, but now are sharing their views on how to treat the world with us. If you don't know who these people are, please research them. They are magnificent people. Um, I've definitely looked at a bunch of videos about them, and I'm they actually have a movie. Um, there's a it's kind of a documentary, but it, it it's like a it's produced like a movie. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. Um, just type in uh, Koji and um, K O G I, the Koji people of Colombia. Just type it out and, and, and you'll see it. Okay. Um, also, I want to say Happy New Year to everyone that is listening to this because you are definitely listening to this in 2023. We made it to another year, people. Um, I'm recording this obviously in 2022, but you know, you're hearing me in, in the future. So, oh, or is that the past now? Well, whatever it is. Anyway, happy new year. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed year of coming. Go see chef, get the very first recipe of the year and let's do it. Um, big things are happening in 2023 for you for me for all of us let's move let's be great let's be awesome okay so until the next journey in 2023 as always 
Have a blessed day and a blessed year. All right. See you later. Thank you for joining us on this voyage. Thanks to Art by Chalet for the logo, episode, and t-shirt designs. You may also get a t-shirt and other items on tpublic.com. You can contact me on all socials at AfroTalesCast. That's Afro, T-A-L-E-S, cast. And email me at AfroTalesPodcast at yahoo.com. You may also become a benefactor by simply sharing with any and everyone, giving a thumbs up, or rating in your podcast app of choice. If you wish to donate, I am on Patreon and Ko-fi.com. That's K-O-F-I.com. So, until we meet again, may your winds be fair and your seas follow.